Hey guys, Peter Fry here, and I want to talk to you guys about anxiety. Anxiety seems to follow us wherever we go. I mean, there's plenty to be worried about in this world, whether it's the uncertainty of the future or relationships that are on the rocks, or maybe it's a diagnosis that keeps us awake at night. Whatever it is that worries us, that troubles our souls, worry seems to follow us wherever we go. And so, so the question I have is, what do we do with worry? How do we keep from getting anxious and letting it overrule our lives and our hearts and our minds? Uh, there's plenty of solutions out there in pop culture. Uh, there's that, that philosophy, uh, don't worry about a thing. Every little thing is going to be all right. And we've heard these things when we walk through hard spots in life we'll often hear people say it's all gonna work out in the end God has a plan while these sentiments seem nice and and cheerful they don't seem to help when anxiety is turning in our hearts and then there is that uh, worry-free philosophy Hakuna Matata what a wonderful phrase. Hakuna Matata. It's our problem free philosophy. I got news for you, Lion King. It just doesn't work. I mean, and to just have a worry-free philosophy is is too simplistic. It, it, it's just, it's there's too much in this world uh, that is broken and full of hurt and pain uh, for me to say a kuna matata and move on. And so the question I have is, what does the Bible say about anxiety? And uh, how does faith change the way we face the hard things of life and does it affect our, our anxiety and our worry? Does faith make a difference? The next three weeks I want to talk about what the Bible has to say about anxiety and so uh, I invite you to come back next Monday and the Monday after to revisit this topic of anxiety as we look at what the Bible says about worry. Well, uh, there's a passage in the book of Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. And then he says this, do not be anxious about anything. Oh, wait, 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 hold up there. This sounds like another kuna matata. I mean, everything's going to be all right. Don't be anxious. And, and perhaps for some of you watching this video, perhaps that is your view of faith. Perhaps you are uh, just exploring these concepts of faith in Jesus and, and the concept of God. And perhaps that is your perception of, of what faith is. It's a, it's a worry-free philosophy where you, it's kind of a band-aid that we put over the, the hurts of this world. It doesn't fix things, but it's a way to cover it up. I don't think that's what this passage is teaching. No, no, I don't want to oversimplify things and, and turn this into another philosophy, but I think what this passage is teaching us is that there is a way to overcome anxiety. Okay, if, if we're not supposed to be anxious, what's the alternative? What is the antidote? What is the cure for my worry? And this is what it says, but in everything. And don't be anxious about anything, but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your requests be known to God. We're told to pray. Here is what this passage is proposing. It is that the antidote of anxiety is the trust, it's the belief that God cares about what you're going through. 
You see, you see the prayer and supplication, a way of talking to God, of saying, God, you know, this is what's troubling me right now. This is what I'm going through, and this is what's keeping me up at night, and this is what, what, what fills my mind as I'm on my way to work or on my way to school. These are the things that worry my soul, and, and, and we're told, make these things known to God. Because the antonym of anxiety is the belief that God cares. It's the belief that, that, that God, uh, He does have a plan and, and that God is intimately and intricately involved in the things that I'm walking through right now. But it's not that God is going to make everything better or that God is going to make life easier. But it is the belief that God cares, that He is walking with me through the hard times. And, 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 and prayer is the belief that God is inviting me to be involved in something bigger than the moment, in something bigger than the, the harsh realities of this broken world, that God's inviting us by prayer to be involved in His bigger story. And it's the belief that God cares about what I'm going through right now. And, and, and so as we read these words, the Apostle Paul is writing from prison. He's been in prison for his Christian faith and his witness of, of proclaiming this very message that there is hope in Jesus. And so, and so he's not just saying uh, from, from a high and lofty place of position and power that not to worry. He, he's not saying that. He's walking through the thick of it and he's walking through it with the belief that God cares. That he is intimately involved in the details of our lives. And though we walk through hard realities, we can take our anxiety and turn it into trust with the belief that God cares. And he invites us by prayer to make our requests known to him, to make our troubles known to him. And what he does is he replaces our anxiety with peace. You see, the antonym to anxiety is not just uh, forgetting about our troubles. It is allowing the peace of God, allowing that belief that Jesus cares about us to overcome our worry and our fears. And the passage says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, this is what the Christian faith does. This is what the hope of Jesus does, is it comes and it enters our world. It enters the brokenness and the suffering and the pain that we walk through. And it says, if you have reason to be anxious. You have reason to worry. But God, He cares and He is involved and He wants to hear what you are, what is troubling you, what is keeping you awake. And as you make your request known to God and you rest in that belief that He cares about you and that He will walk through this with you, then the peace of God does something miraculous. It does something greater than our minds can really understand. It guards us like a wall surrounding us. It comes around us and it says, we do not need to worry. We have peace in the belief that God cares. And I can't explain it, but I can only tell you that there is something greater than my mind can comprehend when the peace of God comes around you in the hard and dark hours of life and it just guards you. And it says, take hope. And it turns our worry and our anxiety into trust. And like a little child reaching out our hand to our father, we say, God, I don't understand. I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to proceed without anxiety overcoming and worry uh, overwhelming me but I'm going to trust that you care and that you're here and that you're going to walk through this hard reality of life with me. And so the antonym of anxiety is the trust that God cares 
And not only that he cares, but that his peace guards us. God does have a plan and and I can't tell you that everything's going to work out and that it's going to be all rosy and cheery with a cherry on top, but I can tell you that he cares about you and his peace can guard you and his his hope and his joy can give you the endurance to walk through life and take your anxiety and turn it into trust. That is my hope for each of you, that you will experience the hope and peace of Jesus in a way that it overcomes anxiety, that it overcomes worry in your life. The Bible has a whole lot more to say about anxiety and faith and how our belief in Jesus changes the way we walk through the troubles of this life. I invite you to come back next week as we revisit this topic of anxiety and leave a comment and let me know what questions or, or thoughts you have about anxiety and maybe we can visit those in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next week.